Good morning, or maybe it's good afternoon, or good evening. I suppose it depends on when you're watching this, huh? Hopefully you're not watching in the middle of the night, unless you want my voice to lull you off to sleep. My name is Joe Schmees. I'm the Executive Director of the Indiana Association of Soil and Water Conservation Districts. Today I want to give you my presentation about the association called Your Association, not Your Ordinary Association. And I'm really going to focus a lot on the fact that it's your association. So I want to start with a definition of association. And I know you may look at me and say, Joe, are you sure these are real definitions? And I promise you, dictionary.com dictionary defines association this way. An organization of people with a common purpose and having a formal structure. The act of associating or state of being associated. Friendship, companionship, connection, or combination. The connection of relations or of ideas, feelings, sensations, or the correlation of elements of perception, reasoning, or the like. An idea, image, feeling suggested or connected by something other than itself. You know, I think that when you look at this, it's important to note a few things here. An organization of people with a common purpose. I feel like we all have a common purpose working together. Friendship, companionship, and a feeling connected with something other than itself. So the Indiana Association of Soil Water Conservation Districts, or IASWCD, or the association as we all know it as well, we're a nonprofit organization that represents the 92 county soil and water conservation districts at the state, federal, and sometimes the local level. And I want to focus on that nonprofit. I think sometimes we get confused with the Indiana State Department of Agriculture, but we are a 501c3 nonprofit uh, and we are an independent organization. I think that's something that's really cool to focus on because while we work with lots of partners, we have the ability to do things maybe that they aren't able to do. We don't answer to anybody necessarily other than you, our members. We were incorporated as a nonprofit in 1968, and for those of you that are good at math, that's over 50 years ago. We're made up of the 92 member districts. We're governed by a 13 member board. We have eight regional directors that are elected by you at annual conference during your regional meetings. I stress that, that they represent you on the association and they are made up of supervisors from your districts. We also have a five executive board members, president, vice president, past president, and treasurer and secretary. We also have assistant regional directors. So when you think about the representation of districts in your region, you really have two representatives here at the association. We have five staff, myself, executive director, Amy Work, and we do have three CCSI staff positions that we administer uh, on behalf of the Indiana Conservation Partnership, and I'll talk about that here in a minute. Our mission is to enable the conservation of Indiana's natural resources. We strive to improve the environment and quality of life for future generations. It's a heavy mission, and I would say we also represent districts. So this just gives you an idea of the regional makeup. I know this map may be difficult to read. Um, one thing I'll note that in the South Southwest, uh, Ray Chatton has stepped away recently as our regional director, but uh, Brad Smith from the Nature Conservancy has taken over that position. So this gives you an idea of your, of your regional leadership. To give you an idea of staff, here in the main office, we're located at the Indiana Farm Bureau office um, down off the East Street in Indianapolis. Uh, really the only folks in the office are myself and Amy Work. I've been the executive director since last May. I manage the association finances and operations, and I represent districts on things like the ICP leadership, the State Soil Conservation Board, the Indiana Agriculture Nutrient Alliance, and the Woodland Steward Institute. I'm a past president and current treasurer of the Indiana Water Resources Association, and I'm currently the president of the Indiana Lakes Management Society. As I mentioned, Amy also works in the office with, with me. Uh, Amy is our communication and member programs director and she's been with the association since April of 2016. She manages and operates association communications and award programs. 
And she represents districts on the ICP Technical Training Committee, the Indiana Family of Farmers, the ICP Communications Committee, as well as on the Women for the Land Steering Committee. And Amy, along with myself, co-leads annual conference. And as I like to say, I might be the executive director of the association, but Amy is the executive director of annual conference and the executive director of River Friendly Farmer. Make sure you remember that. So I mentioned that I would talk about the Conservation Cropping Systems Initiative, so I'm gonna talk about that here for a few minutes. Uh, the Conservation Cropping Systems Initiative, or CCSI, has a mission to improve soil health on Indiana cropland, and it is a program of the Indiana Conservation Partnership. So to give you a snapshot here of workshops and trainings that they've put on since January of this year, there's been 12 trainings with almost 300 staff and ag professionals trained and 74 events reaching 2,500 individuals. And since 2011, they've been able to reach out to nearly 28,000, almost 29,000 individuals. And I mentioned CCSI is a program of the Indiana Conservation Partnership. CCSI is directed by an oversight committee, which is made up of partner members. Uh, the oversight committee consists of two members from the Indiana Association of Soil and Water Conservation Districts, two members from NRCS, two members from State Department of Ag, two members from Purdue, as well as two members from the State Soil Conservation Board. I myself as the executive director is not a, am not a representative for the association. However, I'm an ex officio member and I help administer the program on a day in and day out um, operational standpoint. And I think what's kind of cool about CCSI is you look at you know, the normal Indiana Conservation Partnership, but I feel like we've really come a long way with growing that partnership over the years. I think my favorite right now that I'd point out is Who's Rag today this year for the first time doing uh, Soil Health podcasts over the last year, which is really exciting. So to give you an idea of the CCSI staff, I mentioned earlier that the association administers three of the CCSI positions. We administer the CCSI director, Lisa Holscher's position. She's been director since 2016 and a part of the program since 2012. She oversees planning and implementation, develops external relations, and she's located out of the Princeton Tech Team office. The association also administers the two positions that are the program managers, Jessica Hain and Sheila Schroeder. Jessica is the Southern Program Manager since fall of 2018, and she helps provide planning and logistical support to partners like you, uh, districts, and she's based out of the Corridon office. Sheila is a Northern Program Manager, and she covers the north part of the state and, and will be based out of the Winnemac Service Center. Now there's a fourth employee, Joe Rourke, the agronomist for CCSI. Now Joe's position uh, is administered out of Purdue uh, for research purposes. Um, so I think one thing that's interesting about Joe is that he's one of just over 100 CCSAs with a, with a sustainability certification in the US. He really helps provide that connect, connectivity to Purdue, and he's based out of Lilly Hall at Purdue University. So what does the association do? I think that is why we're all interested in this presentation. You know, in my opinion, probably the thing we do that is the most important is we give districts a unified voice statewide. I mentioned earlier that we represent districts with the executive conservation agencies here at the state level. Um, we represent you at the State Soil Conservation Board and along with the Indiana Family of Farmers and the Indiana Agriculture Nutrient Alliance. Um, I mentioned the Indiana Ag Nutrient Alliance earlier. I think that's a fun, kind of cool, new exciting opportunity for us to be partners with organizations that we haven't necessarily um, have a formalized partnership with previously uh, you know the association i myself sit on that board to represent districts um, and we have kind of our usual partners on that board like the state department of agriculture and nrcs we also have newer partners that we haven't had as much formal partnerships with like the indiana farm bureau uh indiana ag council uh Nature Conservancy, and the commodity groups. So we do try to represent you here at that, at that state level. We advocate for soil and water conservation districts across the state with the state legislature. Uh, just myself this year, I've uh, been in front of the state legislature three times 
advocating for districts. You may know that we upped our ante this year and we asked for $15.2 million of increase from the normal $1 million line item and the budget for Clean Water Indiana. While we didn't get the funding that we asked for, and I think I've heard um, from some that it wasn't necessarily a success, I think we really got some attention this year. I think we focused on something that was a little bit of a different narrative for us. We weren't focused on cost share programs for districts. We were talking about district staff, district capacity, and the ability to provide technical assistance across the state. And I think we got some attention in that aspect. The other thing we do is we try to bring districts to the state house. Uh, I have several pictures in this slide here. You'll note that um, I sent out several dates this year for districts to come down to the state house. If you, if you didn't have the opportunity or weren't interested, I would recommend that you take the opportunity. We we're looking again in 2020 during a short session to do these types of visits. Uh, Cress Heiser, our contract lobbyist, does a fantastic job with districts. Uh, I help provide parking information and logistics to get you there. Uh, Cress meets you at the state house. You get um, kind of a historical background and tour of the state house, talk about the issues at hand for the session, and then have the opportunity to work with Crest to reach out and meet face-to-face -face with your legislators. 